wanted to make a short video um, just trying to give some instruction on how to deal with a cost chart. Um, so typically what you see, and I'm not going to write these columns in any specific order, um, typically what you would see are the following columns and what you would get to do is that you're basically going to solve for missing numbers and the reason why we do that or why I'm asking you to do that kind of thing is I'm trying to test you on your ability to understand the relationships between the different columns. So generally, I'm not going to ask you, um, these are generally going to be filled out, and it would go from zero to however many numbers that we have here. Now keep in mind, the quantities may increase by units of 10 or hundreds or something like that, but let's just keep it easy here and having them in, have them increase by units of one. And then what you typically see here is you see that the um, items, um, the way that they appear is that there are random, there are numbers that are randomly um, placed in this chart. Um, I'm kind of making this up as I as I make this lecture here. Um, this is gonna be messy. Okay, uh, let me try to uh, think about how I want to do this. Um, Okay. I'm not even sure if I'm giving enough information here. Um, Okay, let's just go with this. There might be some missing numbers here where I can't solve it all. The whole point of this lecture is, though, that is that you might be given a chart like this. Obviously, I would have thought about it a little bit beforehand, but you'll be given a chart with some numbers there, some numbers not. The whole point of this lecture is I want to talk to you about the strategy you're going to use to solve the missing things. The first thing you should do is fill out zero for variable cost at quantity zero. You do that because um, at, at, the, at, at zero levels, zero production, you wouldn't have any variable costs. Um, then you want to determine your fixed cost because once you know one number in this column, you know them all. Now the ways to get your fixed cost would include, um, well, it could be really easy. I give you one. A second option would be you could take the average fixed cost and you could multiply it by the quantity. Another option would be that you could have the total cost and you subtract from it the um, the variable cost. Mm, another option would be is that you could take the average total cost and subtract the average variable cost and then multiply that by the quantity. And if I go back to um, any of our notions of cost, I think that 
essentially covers um, everything that we could want to do here. Um, here we actually have it pretty easy. Uh, we can determine the fixed cost one of two ways. Either we could get fixed cost at quantity zero, and we can see that the fixed costs are equal to 30. How do we know that? Because as we see here at quantity zero, the total cost is 30. And I'm subtracting the variable cost to equal my fixed cost, which would mean I have 30 minus zero equals 30. Which means then I know these all. Alternatively, I could have found it at quantity 3. Fixed cost at quantity equals 3. Because then that would be AFC times Q, which in this case is 10 times 3, which is equal to 30. It's the same number. It doesn't matter which one I used. Now, the easiest advice here is just go row by row. Now, there's no marginal cost at quantity zero. This would be undefined, this would be undefined, and this would be undefined. So you can put a dash, leave them blank, whatever you prefer. So now we have quantity one. And at quantity one, now I just like to go then left to right and just start solving things. So 30 plus 18 will give me 48. And now I can see that I went from 30 to 48, which is a difference of 18. I would have 30 divided by 1. I would have 18 divided by 1. And I would have 48 divided by 1. Now, in quantity 2, I can see that I have a total cost of 58. Fixed costs are 30. So this would be 58 minus 30, which would give me 28. So again, if I'm trying to solve for um, variable costs, variable costs, again, are being solved by, again, AVC times Q. Um, I could have total cost minus fixed cost, which is what I did here. Um, I could take the previous row's variable cost and add to it the current row's marginal cost. These are just some of the options here. I went from 48 to 58, that's a difference of 10. Now I have 30 divided by 2. Now I have 28 divided by 2. And now I have 58 divided by 2. And I would just keep going down row by row by row to solve this entire table.